Hello everyone and welcome to highlights of this Vanarama National League South clash between Bar City and Dover Athletic from Twerton Park. It's community day with the initiatives including pay what you want for admission. Tabletoppers City have proven to be good value for money all season. They've won six of their last seven in all competitions and stretching back to last term, it's two defeats in 15. Last week's stunning FA Cup turnaround at Larkle has kept up the feel-good factor in Somerset. Dover also progressed in the competition, but the last few months for them have been turbulent. Having avoided relegation on the final day, Mitch Brundle, the youngest manager in the division, was forced to reshape his squad with a lot of experienced heads moving on. Following four points in their first two games, it's two from 21 available, with only Haven to Mortaluga keeping them off bottom spot. That said, their league record against the Romans is impressive, and beaten in nine since a 2 1 defeat here 20 years ago. The last meeting between these clubs in March ended goalless. It was Dover's fourth clean sheet in a row, but they've only recorded one since. City have scored at least two in every game in eight of their ten matches this season. Jerry Goers without captain Kieran Parcell having been forced off in last week's victory. Jack Batten is in from the start and takes over the armband. Reserve goalkeeper Adam Forster is also among the substitutes, with Ben Morgan injured. For Dover, Archie Hatcher marked his first start to the Man of the Match outing against Hastings last week, and he retains his place. Zidane Sutherland makes way for George Nikaj, and captain Shane Dunn misses out through injury, having been an ever-present before today. Commentary for this game is provided by Bar City Radio's Alex Lane Kjeltka, Andrew Kerslake and Toby Wellington. Here we go, so City are lined up, Dover over the ball just waiting to kick us off, Young over the ball as things stand, they've got four players lined up on the halfway line, it looks like they might be playing a long ball from the start to test City straight away. The referee checking his watches, he blows the whistle and we are off here at Twerton Park in the Vanarama National League South. The ball played forward for Dover. Nick Az has managed to receive it in the attacking third. Ross with the tackle and Jack Batten will clear away for Cody Cook. Oh, absolutely, the level of quality in the Welsh League, I'm sure, is uh, just as good as the league quality here in the Van Arama National League South. Connor's key, not sure on their uh, history, but as Oyanuga plays a good ball through here to Powell, who's made his way into the penalty area on the right-hand side, whips the ball across, and Ify Allen has put it over at the back post. That's a huge chance for Dover Athletic to open the scoring within three and a half minutes there. Yeah, there was suddenly a huge gap on the City's left-hand side. Ball across, Allen should have made more of that. It's been more difficult than maybe City and the fans expected. We are eight and a half minutes in, nil-nil. Batten plays the ball over the top, and here is Jordan Thomas. Thomas tried to play it across to Scott Wilson, who was in the middle of the box, and Terrell came out well and claimed the ball eventually into lock and Nikaj oh that's a poor challenge there on Jordan Dyer the referee plays on referee deciding no foul there as Ify Allen gets it and again he squares up Joe Reigns 1v1 goes down the left hand side on his left foot gets the ball across cleared away by Greenslade and Thomas will bring it out that looked like a poor challenge to me Andrew yeah did went in rather late now Smith gets his head up goes into the center circle into Russ Opens his body up onto the right-hand side now with Thomas. First time ball into the feet of Cook. Going into the attacking third here, City. And it's switched out to the left-hand side with Clark. Clark on his left foot, whips one in. It's well defended by Naylor. Clark's going to take this down. He's got the opportunity just outside the box to play a 1-2 with Smith and get it back. Squares up the opposition. Onto his right foot. Now it's Smith. Opportunity to get this into the box, potentially. Russ out to Greenslade on the left-hand side. Hugging the touchline at the moment is Clark. Back into Greenslade. Clark was fouled. Referee plays on. Greenslade's ball in. And Mensa heads behind for a corner. City starting to roll here. And they've got their first corner of the game. As Thomas takes it short to Clark from the left-hand side for City. Thomas now just on the edge of the box. Lines one up. Tom Smith hits one right-footed. It's deflected away by the back of Locke. Neither won the ball, it's cleared away by Greenslade in the end and a slip in midfield allowed Thomas to get the ball into Wilson. Wilson has it, into Clark. Clark coming down the left-hand side, finds Tom Smith, 25 yards out, has a go. It's a bobbly effort, but it's the first shot on target for Bath City. A few choice words, I'm sure, for Locke the next time he ends up on that part of the pitch. As the ball goes forward to Cook, great flick on. Scott Wilson takes a touch with his head, sets it back to Ewan Clark, just on the edge of the side of the box. Left-footed cross in, comes all the way out to Thomas, and it's just wide from City's winger. 
opportunity to get this in the box is a little bit more difficult because it's going to have to be a little straighter, but Clark whips it towards the back post where Russ has gone across and he's got his head on it, but, oh, sorry, it's Jordan Dyer, um, and Terrell was able to get it in his hands. As it is with Cook on the right-hand side. And Oldman brings down Cook there. And it didn't look like he won the ball, but it will be a corner nonetheless for City. He's got so much space, he might as well just kind of shoot it. It is with Thomas now. He comes into the box, there's Clark on the overlap. He lays off for Clark on his left foot on the edge of the box. Now with Thomas, 20 yards out, just to the right of centre. And Onyuga is able to clean up the mess there. Smith in the centre circle. Inside the Dover half, able to get it to Clark now. He's on the right hand side, as we just mentioned, the switching of the wings. Can send a cross in with the right foot. George Cook wins the header. But it's well held by Terrell. And another shot on Tiger for Bow City. Well, after his opening few minutes, has to be said, City have looked a lot more dangerous than Dover have. Yeah, lovely glancing header there. Perfect cross coming in from Clark. Unfortunately, absolutely straight at the keeper. Just sends a ball forward, wayward Lynn. It finds Russ. Now Wilson to Smith. Halfway inside the Dover half. Clark on right hand side will run towards the byline. This gives past Ogerman at the byline now. Sends a cross and again Terrell not able to clear it away. Strong enough of his palms. But then Young is there to hook it away for a throw in. Waiting for that mistake to happen. It almost came there. Slightly light ball back to Naylor who had to clear it upfield. And Cook may be able to bring the ball down. He does so incredibly well against Mensa. He turns away from Young into Wilson, who's inside the box now, trying to take a shot, Ogerman brings him down, referee says no, and he goes all the way back to the keeper, Terrell, and it looked like Ogerman did just toe poke it away from the Bath City striker. Back into Hatcher, squares it to Young. He's in Dover, just passing around very well, nice simple passes, but near the edge of the box, on the right-hand side, up towards the byline, with Locke. Dyer just holding him off. Able to get it back onto the left foot, sends a cross in, it would have gone through to Nickage, or perhaps even Allen. It's a great shot, and that's a goal for Dover. And that's a brilliant finish from Archie Hatcher, who won Man of Match last week in the FA Cup. And that's a splendid finish from the 36th minute into the top corner. And currently it's now Bow City nil, Dover Athletic won. Lots of work for Jerry Gill's men to do now. Yeah, totally against the run of play, that ball coming out to Hatcher, just on the edge of the 18-yard box, probably about 19, 20 yards out. Just let fly with the ball, and uh, it sailed high into Ollie Wright's net. And, uh, well, City go behind, but uh, you have to say, unfortunate after all the pressure that they've exerted. The two top goal scorers with two goals each are both on the bench in Zidane Sutherland and Roman Charles Cook. So I was trying to work out where the goals were going to come from as Nikaj looked more like the sort of player who was going to hold it down and then lay it off for a player rather than score the goals. But now Bath City will break forward to Ewan Clark. And what a great chance was to be for Smith to send the ball in. It's a poor cross though and it meets no one. As Mensah and Cook challenging for the ball in the air again. Cook does come out of possession though. And he does have Ewan Clark on the right hand side. He lays it off for Clark. He could try and take a shot. It's a heavy touch towards the byline. Set to cross in. And it's cleared away by Ogerman that time. He got a toe in before Scott Wilson was latching onto that one. And it will be a corner. And Ogerman's been booked there for kicking the ball away, I believe. I might have been Iron in fact, it was booked actually. In comes the corner for Clark. If the goal or the ball hits the back of the net, should I say, there'll be a. A massive evasion, it goes in towards Dyer. Now with Smith on the edge of the box, and get it back out to Ewan Clark on the right-hand side, he does so. Takes a touch onto his left foot, sends another cross in. It's a looping one to Batten. Well held by Terrell, and a great shot from Smith. It looked like it was going to be a great shot anyhow. It's charged down, it goes out for another corner, which Clark will go over to take. Much better from City again. Hopefully City can get a few more of them, and hopefully find the back of the net and find the equaliser. In comes from Thomas now towards Cook, who does get a really good looping header on the ball. And Terrell does well just to watch it all the way, and he's able to fingertip it over the bar. Well, they pretty much land on the edge of the 18-yard box. Uh, the penalty area, not the 18-yard box. And here it comes towards the edge of the penalty box. It is going to be Wilson on the end of that. And it went over, a little bit went over the line. Referee and linesman both say no. Somehow Cook had flicked it on, and Wilson almost converting it into the back of the net and it must have been cleared off the line by Ogerman. Incredible clearance from a defender there. And so hard to throw. tell because the ball was high in the net as to whether it actually did or didn't cross the line. Looks like Hayfield is going to be coming on and it looks like Cook is actually going to be coming off here so I'm not quite sure what's happened yep. to Cody Cook but he is going to have to make way for Dan Hayfield who actually made quite a big difference against Larkwell last week. Can he make a difference here against Dover as well but Cook, who scored a brace last weekend in the FA Cup, has to make way just before the interval. Very unfortunate for him, near the byline. 
Tries to go back to Greenside, not able to do so though. Greenside does incredibly well to win the ball back. Now with Thomas, takes a touch to his left-hand side. Could run towards the byline, has Greenside with him. Well had by Ian Nugas, sends a good cross in. It could fall to Wilson, who will take a shot of the side foot. It's charged down that time by Naylor. Now, two City players both appealing for a handball there. Nothing doing from referee, Mr. Elson. And it will come all the way out for a throw-in, which Dyer will take. Yeah, certainly a few hands went up for City, believing it was potentially a, a handball situation there against Naylor. And there goes the half-time whistle. And it, it does end the first half as Bath City nil, Dover Athletic won. A very, very fine finish from Hatcher. Dover, of course, haven't kept a clean sheet yet all season in any competition, so it will be interesting to see whether they can hold out for the full 90 here. And with the amount of chances that City were able to create, you would hope not. Um, but Jerry Gill will be crossing his fingers at the moment that City can get themselves up the pitch a little bit because in these first five minutes of the second half, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a struggle for them to get up in the uh, attacking third. Yeah, good illustration of how well Dover are pressing. You and Clark had to take the ball all the way back to the keeper. A few seconds ago, couldn't find any leeway. But City are pressing forward all of a sudden, and Tom Smith is 25 yards out, has a shot saved by the keeper, comes to Dan Hayfield, couldn't take the touch on his left foot, but the referee's assistant has lifted his flag to indicate that Hayfield was offside into the feet of Dyer. City looking to progress forward, and they're starting to get possession higher and higher up the pitch every minute that goes by. Thomas. Faces up lock, gets a left-footed cross in. It's a very deep one, and it's Clark who's collected it right on the far side of the edge of the box. Clark onto his left foot, clips one in towards the middle of the box, and it's the keeper, Terrell, who then confidently comes and takes it two-handed. Very young side, although that's given away by Greenslade. And uh, Dover come forward now with Powell on the right foot, just outside the box now. Locke has it right-footed. He squares up Greenslade. He's quite a tricky player as Locke comes in on his left foot. Still got the ball as lock, goes in between Evans and, oh my goodness me, the referee's given a penalty. Wow, lock went in between Thomas and Greenslade, neither of them seemed to make a challenge. It was uh, one of those um, instances where there's a sandwich between two players and I think Lock realised he wasn't going to get the ball and just hit the deck, but the referee has bought it and Dover Athletic have a penalty. Yeah. Referee's clearly not going to change his mind despite the protestations from the City players. That is extremely soft, I've got to say. I um, was, was just about to say that City had a goal kick because the ball rolled out of play. Yeah, you get the feeling he was looking for that. Yeah, there is no contact of any kind other than a shoulder to shoulder there, and the uh, referee's bought lock going down, so interesting. But here we go. Ollie Wright on his, on his line, trying to make himself look as big as possible. Saved. Oh, it's Iffy Allen. And he puts it into the bottom corner, and Iffy Allen has made it 2-0 to Dover Athletic here. Wow, in, that is incredible. 58 minutes, Dover Athletic against the run of play, as when they scored their first goal in this game, have put themselves 2-0 up at Twerton Park. What a shot that is, Andrew. And to be fair, it was a good penalty from very a good. very experienced player. Knew exactly where he wanted to put it. They're about to bring on a substitution. It's going to be Baptiste, who's another of their academy graduates, who's going to make his way onto the pitch. As Clark collects it on the right-hand side, squares up Ogerman, looking for a left-footed cross, potentially sets it back to Reigns, who whips a beautiful ball in towards Thomas. It's headed away. It's going to come to Russ on the edge of the box, chests it down, gets it to Tom Smith. Smith out to Thomas, but Oyanuga's got there brilliantly. That's a really good challenge, and it's going to go for a corner. He thought it was a goal kick, but City just starting to crank the pressure up again and it's going to be delivered left-footed by Thomas it's a flat delivery that's flicked away Reigns tried to get a touch on it comes all the way out to Russ he's got Tom, uh, Tom Smith up the line he whips it in right-footed in towards the uh, middle of the box it's come out to Thomas now left-footed inside the box clips one in oh it's going over the keeper and Terrell backpedaling didn't know where it was going it lands on the roof of the net and Dover get away with one there takes a couple of touches and whips it into the box and Naylor's coming around the back post that's brilliant defending there by Dyer. Russ unable to get a clearance on it but Reigns wins it well and Russ with a very good switch of play out to Thomas who takes a touch and seems to have slowed down a little bit too much there allows Dover to get all the way back into a defensive shape but a lovely ball out to Ewan Clark 
on the right hand side. He's got Baptiste for the first time against him. Onto his right foot, another clip ball into the back post, and Thomas has scored! City back in the game! It's Jordan Thomas at the back post with a left footed volley. Brilliant ball by Ewan Clark, and it's City 1, Dover Athletic 2. That was a, a goal joyous in its simplicity almost. Clark on the edge of the 18 yard box, dribbling towards the defence. Picked out Clark on the far post. For a moment, you thought this has gone over everybody, but instead of which, Clark with a great volley straight into the back of the net. I'm just waiting for the ball to actually touch the ground, but it's come out to Hatcher, who's hit one right footed, and Ollie Wright will sit on the ball almost. It was a nice, easy one to take in in the end. Jack Batten will drive forward here. He's just playing a right-footed ball. Forward it goes towards Thomas, it's headed away by Naylor. Scott Wilson, beautiful touch. Russ on the left-hand side of the penalty area. Finds Greenslade, looks to drive on across, it comes to Russ. Russ on his right foot, finds Joe Reigns. Joe Reigns about 30 yards from goal, plays out to Ewan Clark on the right-hand side. The danger man for City once again, Ewan Clark on his left foot, has a go, curling effort, and it's saved by Terrell. Straight into his hands, unfortunately, for City, but City are starting to crank up the pressure here on Dover. That's a good thing to crank up. <laughs> crank something. <laughs> You're too young to know about starting handles. Oh, exactly. I just, you know, I was trying to come up with something and it just wouldn't compute in my mind. As Green Slade is not fouled, says the referee, just over the halfway line, but the linesman has given it. Well, the linesman gave it. The referees wave play on for Dover. Dover have continued forward. The ball goes across with Locke. And it's going to go out for a throw in right in the bottom corner. Well, very strange there. Greenslade still down over on the far side. Dover looking as if they're going to make a, a substitution. Not in any hurry to do so. Um, but a lot of complaints about that. Uh, and as we said just a few minutes ago, so contrary to the way that the referees refereed the game, he has let a lot go. There have been players going down and he's just ignored it. And so giving of that penalty seems really surprising. Well, it's very clear when referees, they'll, they'll let their assistants know at the start of the game whether they're going to make all the calls or if they'll allow their assistants to help them out with anything. And unfortunately for City today, it's, it's been the referees' game today. Well, Danny Greenslade going off and, as we predicted, Elliot Freer about to come on. But City will have lost Cook and will have lost Greenslade this afternoon. Still got injuries in terms of Wright and Parcel as well. And uh, we've talked much about squad sizes, uh, but this is where it begins to be put to the test. Sutherland battling with Atten there, and Powell wins the ball back inside the Bow City box. Reigns is there, definitely no penalty that time. You can see that Reigns got the ball first, and he's a bit tangled up with Sutherland there. But good opportunity now for Hayfield to break away, gets his touch completely wrong, and the ball just bounces back on Ayanuga there. He almost misplaced that clearance completely. It does well to watch it all the way. Now with Thomas inside the visitor's half. Tries to flick it over as he was falling over to Freer. Not able to do so. Batten, and we always, we always talk about this it's on a, a weekly bat basis. A Batten head back to the keeper. The Batten head back to the keeper. Truly a skill. We haven't seen one this half, have we? We have not. We have not. It was nice to see that, actually. It, it, it doesn't feel like a Bath City game if we don't see it. Oh, so yes. yeah, There it is with Freer. Brings it inside. Now in the Dover half on that left-hand side right near the centre circle with Thomas. Crosses it to right-hand side with Smith. Pushes it forward to Clark, who's chased down very easily, but Smith does well to regain possession, brings it inside for Reigns. Now onto Clark, going towards the byline. Can send a cross in on the edge of the box. Does so, towards Thomas, and it's in! It's two all we're in Twente Park. Scotty Wilson with his seventh of the season. 65 minutes gone, 75 minutes gone, should I say. As Scott Wilson makes it 2 all here at Wetton Park. Brilliant from City. Can they start your winner? And yet again, a lovely move from City. Clark so influential this afternoon at the heart of that. He waited once again to look at where he should place his cross, put it across, and uh, City drawing level, much to the delight of this large crowd here at Twerton Park this afternoon. It'll be interesting to see now in these closing stages what Dover are made of. City have had to make those substitutions, but Dover are going to be the side that are feeling the pressure. Well, Dover got on with that centre kick very quickly, actually, as Russ does bring I'll tell you what, Luke Russ has been fantastic in this second half. Thomas on the left-hand side, overlap to Freer, can send it in towards Scott Wilson. It looks like it's been cleared away. 
And it looks like Kimmer Wilson lands. I think he got his control slightly wrong. He's going to ask Kieran Parcel, the skipper, to sit down in front of us there. He was getting just as excited as we are here in the tank <laughs> as he waves an apology to us. Thomas was able to find Scotty Wilson, the two goal scorers almost linking up there. Clark does really well, turn away from Odgerman. And that's twice there, and Odgerman really should go into a book for that, for two challenges, really. Well, he took out a, a kick at Clark there after the ball had already gone off the pitch. It'll be Ayanuga, 1-2 with Young perhaps. Now a brilliant challenge from Luke Russ once again, just keeping the ball back inside the Dover half. Ayanuga driving forward down the central line. And Smith is able just to put Ayanuga off there. And you and Clark might be able to break away. Has Thomas to his left and Wilson in front of him. Clark will just keep running, but he holds on ball for a bit too long. And Argument's able just to put his foot in to stop the Bristol City low knee from breaking forward anymore. I suppose after being 2 0 down, you definitely take a point. And Smith is able to break away. That's Thomas on his own on the left hand side. Ayanuga's coming across to try and help defend. Wilson is in there. Thomas takes a heavy touch for and Ayanuga's able just to shoulder him off. And he goes straight out for a goal kick. Looking for the overlap. And instead, it's able just to push it forward onto Wilson, who does really well to let off the Hayfield. Inside now for Smith. Ball wasn't quite ahead of him, but he's able to just do a diagonal ball to right hand side for Clark. But, oh, oh, it's brilliant from you and Clark to get away from Argument, and that will probably be a free kick. Referee says no, though, as Reigns on the edge of the box had to cross it low, and the keeper has to go down to his left hand side and palm it away for a corner. He was expecting a cross, but clearly, Reigns' cross shot took him off guard and it will be another corner for City. Well, absolutely everything happening here this afternoon. Lovely drag back from Clark there before he was pulled down. Referee ignored the pull down as it went to Reigns. Reigns shot across goal and Terrell will have to turn it around his post. And the corner is taken quickly for Thomas. He has Clark on the overlap, uses him. It's a heavy touch. Oh, but Clark has a chance to take a shot of the left foot here because high and wide. Wilkinson was putting him off as the shot was coming in. But Mensah's there, he will break away forward and Mensah Inside the bath half, he's driven all the way forward. Thomas does really well to come back. And Freer just able to put, put off the winger there. And Paris Lock, Hayfield, Reigns. Very cagey at the moment in that midfield. As Clark does really well to spin away from Argyman. There's Young on him now. It cuts inside towards the edge of box. Because then overlapping ball on towards Hayfield. It's a low one though, cleared away by Naylor. Hayfield reigns up to Wilson, does really well to chest it down for himself. Naylor does incredibly well as well, but Scott Wilson comes away with it, and that should be a free kick for Bow City, and it's going to be a second booking against Ogerman, and it will be a red card, and it has to be said, it was very similar to the penalty incident, although that was certainly more of a sandwich. Wouldn't say it was a bookable offence, but Ogerman is off, and they are down to 10 men now, Dover. Here comes Clark in swinger. To the back post towards Freer. It can be battered, it doesn't quite hit the defender. And Mens is able to clear it away. To the right hand side, but it's, it's actually put a good foot in that time by Thomas as well. I think Jordan Thomas has been sublime from a defensive point of view today. As Thomas could break away now, to Hay he has to flip it over to Hayford though. He's charging into the right hand side of the box. Sends a low cross in. It can be Wilson! Oh, and it goes over the bar! Great opportunity for Scott Wilson. It just bubbled up at him in the last moment. He had no players around him with a weaker left foot and it flies well over the bar and it does remain 2-0. That was poor from Scott Wilson. Came in far too quickly on that ball, had plenty of time, but he stopped, had taken a chance to, to put the ball in the back of the net. Instead, he ran on it, fired it really hard and it flew over the net. And Reigns does really well to keep the ball away from Wilkinson. Hayfield could break away. Near the centre circle now, goes to the left-hand side with Freer. He could break away down that left flank, has Thomas ahead of him. And you can definitely see the numbers difference now. Thomas, not the best ball to Thomas, he wanted it a bit ahead of him. Has Smith in the box, it's a cross in towards Wilson. But it avoids everyone, it goes straight out for a goal kick. Two all here at Twerton Park. Ewan Clark with the outswinging corner. Towards the penalty spot, almost finds Batten and the keeper gets his punch completely wrong. And almost fell to a City player and Rust does really well. Just to hoof the ball to right hand side and Clark will be on side, I think. The linesman does say, Linesman hasn't put his flag up, but Thomas Smith does well just to charge down. It'd have been better off going off to Wilson instead. There will be a throw in for City, just 15 yards or so, 20 yards inside the Dover half as Russ switches it up to the left-hand side for Freer. And every single Dover player pretty much behind the ball now. Freer switching up to the right-hand side, but unfortunately it will reach no one other than the goalkeeper. Forced ball from Freer that time, Reigns. 
looking for an option, has Russ inside. Halfway inside the Dover half. Freer towards the left for Thomas. Plenty of players, the players in mid center cross into. Smith's at a back post and don't think he's able to quite keep that in. In comes the corner now for Thomas. It's a deep one, which Smith isn't able to win ahead of four, but it will find its way to Russ on the right-hand side. Could run towards a byline. Send an early cross in, up towards Batten. It could fall for Hayfield. Takes a touch, almost takes a shot. Falls to Hayfield again, unfortunately. It goes out before he's able to send the cross in. It will be a goal kick. Once again, it's, all, it's just so many goals in these Bath City games this season. There's Smith on that left-hand side. Just hugging the touchline at the moment. Thomas, opportunity to send a cross in. They're going to have to try and find a winner in this attack, you would imagine. Thomas does well to take a touch. Send doing the left foot, the Mentors there first with a poor cross in. And there goes a full-time whistle. And it does finish here at Twerton Park. A Bath City 2, Dover Athletic 2. Well, Bath City were 2-0 down from half after half-time. And somehow they were able to fight their way back to scrap, to scout the gamble, or gamble, a point, should I say, in this game. Sorry, I couldn't get my words out there. I am incredibly breathless after the second half. And we can all thank Jordan Thomas and Scott Wilson for that. And it does feel like every single player on the pitch looks incredibly disappointed in themselves. Yeah, what a match that was. I mean, if you look at this for a moment from Dover's perspective, they must feel deflated. They won last week against Hastings in the FA Cup. They were 2-0 up in this match. OK, albeit one of those, a bit of a gift from the referee for what we all felt was something of a dodgy penalty. But 2-0 is 2-0. So then to have to come away with just a draw from the game. And actually, I mean, in many ways, they were very lucky to get that because City's so, so close to getting the winner this afternoon. Well, Jerry Gill said earlier on today in his interview that City won't win every game this season. There will be knocks along the road. I don't think this one feels so much like a knock because they came back from a 2-0 deficit. I think perhaps the critical thing this afternoon when the dust is settled has been Cody Cook limping off and Danny Greenslade limping off. As we said, though, you did mention it already, but, you know, 2 all home to Dover doesn't sound great on paper, but when you consider the circumstances, it's a great result in the end. And the difference between this week and last week has definitely got to be the fact that when they were 2-0 down, uh, down against Lark Hall, we thought that would be it. We thought maybe Lark Hall were going to go score maybe 3 or 4. It wasn't the best first-half performance, and then they fought back. Strangely, in this game, you never really felt like City were going to lose. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Something of a late finish, seven minutes past five for us. And, uh, well, City drawing this afternoon. Thanks very much for being with us. And we will see you again, hopefully, next week. But do travel, if you can, down to Weymouth for that FA Cup tie.